go ahead and open up your Visual Studio. And when you get to that first screen here, we want to choose the create a new project option. So when you click on create a new project, um, it, you can have any um, thing you needed for it, for the project? Yeah, that'll take you to a screen where you choose, it tells you here, you're going to choose a project template with code scaffolding to get started, meaning that you'll have a project type in a certain language then that you're gonna identify. And also some, uh, some files that get created for you automatically that help support the whole compile process and testing your and debugging your code and things of that nature. Then click yeah. on create a new project. And now you can see you have these choices. It defaults to the C sharp Visual Basic choices for uh, console app, .NET Core. So when it comes to frameworks, Microsoft has always had uh, what they call the .NET framework. And then recently, about two, three years ago, they updated it to a newer, more efficient framework. And so that newer framework is called the .NET Core. And it's the .NET Core framework that gives us that advantage that I was mentioning to you earlier, and you can see in the description here, that we can actually write code once and then have it run on the different operating systems listed there, Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. So this one would not support, actually, let me do it for C Sharp here. Uh, this one would not support uh, iOS, but there is another tool that we can add to Visual Studio called Xamarin. And Xamarin lets me write code that can also be exported then to uh, Android and iOS devices. But we're focusing on desktops right now, so this is the choice we're gonna make. C Sharp, .NET Core, so C Sharp being the language, uh, .NET Core, meaning that's the framework we'll be able to access from this template. And the uh, style of program as opposed to a forms app. So a forms app would be more like a graphical display where you would have like little inputs and buttons and things of that nature. So in the first level class, we just do console apps. It's much easier to, to understand the code from that perspective, I think. So two things here, we're going to use the C-sharp language and then the template type, is, well, actually three things. So C-sharp's the language, console app is the application type, and then .NET Core is the library that we want to have available. So as long will as that's your, be, go ahead. Well, we'll be um, using the console app .NET Core a lot in this class? Uh, pretty much exclusively, yes. Is that a problem? No, I was just wondering. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's primarily we'll be using that. Uh, we'll show you a little bit of JavaScript a little bit later on. Uh, you have to load up a web uh, development environment to be able to demonstrate the JavaScript. Because what I really want you to see is here's the difference on the framework. So we're not going to be using the older framework, which is the .NET framework, but you can see that's still a template that's available here. So .NET Core, that's what we're going to be using as far as our library, not the .NET framework. Now we click next down here in the bottom of this dialog box. We'll give it a name. We'll call it our uh, first project. Might want to make a note to yourself. This is where Microsoft has their code. Uh, as you create these new projects, this is where the code files will be actually stored for you on your storage device. So the default is your root drive, which is usually the C drive, your users folder, whatever your username is, then source and then repos. And if I were to go to my repos folder right now in that source folder, I would actually see the contents of my first project as soon as I click create down here. Uh, the other thing, too, that you should understand about Visual Studio is that a project is an individual program that you're writing, and it's very likely that you're going to want to write multiple projects to be able to create your application, and so all your projects are organized into what's called a solution. So you see at the very bottom, it's actually the same name as I typed in first project for my project name, then the Visual Studio just typed in that same name for me as the solution. Now, if I wanted to change that, if I was gonna have, oh, I'm creating a mega program here, and this is just gonna be the first project in my mega program, then the project name would be first project and the solution name would be mega program. So when I went into that repos directory that we just talked about here, 
the parent folder in repos would be called mega program. And then inside of the mega program folder would be another folder called first project. And that's where all the code files, the source code files would be for that specific project. So solutions are just a way of organizing multiple projects into a single folder, a single solution as they call it in Microsoft world. As a developer, that's what they refer to us as. We're solution developers. Right? We're looking at a problem. We're trying to come up with a digital solution. So more than likely, you know, down the road, you'll be creating multiple projects. In fact, when we do some of these demos, I'll have you create multiple projects within a single solution. So for now, just first project as your name, doesn't really matter the solution name. Go ahead and click create in the lower right. Okay, and so Visual Studio now, based on the instructions that we gave it there, loaded up the template for a C-sharp console application. And it's supported by, if you look at these dependencies over here, the uh, .NET Core framework. So you can see right there, Microsoft.NET Core .app. So that's just the parent name for the, the code that we'll be utilizing here within our program. Our actual program code is this file right here, program.cs. If you look at your tab right over here, now it has the title program.cs. So all of your C-sharp programs by default, the, the first source code file that you wanna run within the project needs to be named program.cs because that's how Visual Studio is set up. When we go to test our code, it's gonna look for a program.cs file and then follow the instructions in that file and that file may then point to other files. We won't have that at, at our level of the course. Um, but when you get into higher level courses, you, you'll have to create separate what they call class files and then utilize those class files within your main program file. So we'll take a quick look at the basic code that it gives us here. So again, we're using the .NET library, which is thousands and thousands of pre-written blocks of code for us in, in these format that I referred to, the class format. Um, and so the kind of most commonly used component of that framework is the system library. Because the system library contains a lot of the uh, code files that are for basic system operations, like the console object. It's very common, as you can imagine, in a console application that you need to use a console object to be able to you know, display values to the screen and also to take uh, values in input from your users as well. So that is called a directive. If you were in C++ world, they call that a preprocessor directive. So what we're really doing is we're telling the compiler, hey, you need to go and get access to this code and have it ready in memory so that when you go to process the code I've written, as I call on these different elements from that library, then we'll, the compiler will be immediately able to, to grab that code and utilize it as necessary to run our code, to process our code. Then as I also mentioned to you earlier, C Sharp specifically was written for an object-oriented environment. And so they organized the actual program coding structure into the format you would expect to find in an object-oriented environment. So for instance, the system, which is a library in the .NET framework, .NET Core framework, as well as .NET framework, that basically is a way of grouping multiple classes together in a program. So the namespace needs to be unique within the, the whole entire program that we're using. Like any time that I want to write some code and I want it to apply to the, the program that's written here, I'll have to put that code inside of that same namespace, the first project. Then inside your namespace, again, in an object-oriented environment, they organize the classes into the namespaces. So that's kind of like a subdivision of the namespace. Then so console, for instance, in the system namespace is the actual class file. And it's the class file that is the, the blueprint that has all the code in it that represents the functionality of what a console should be able to do. 
So the console is the class here, and that class is inside of an outer class called program. And so it's, again, the program, the namespace, I should say the class name needs to match what we have here in the file name. That's, again, the compiler's way of knowing which is the first line of code to run. And we only have one file in here that could actually be run. But if you had multiple files, it'll always look for program.cs. And so your class also wants to be program. That stuff is always going to be done for you every time you create a new project. So I just need you to be aware of the format structure. You will not on your own be writing that structure. We are always going to be working down here. So in a class, they have methods, properties, and events. So what we're looking at in here is for the class program, it has a main method. And that's true of all C-sharp programs, uh, whether they be console apps or even uh, what they call form apps, which is the graphical interface. So everything runs inside of main. So once, once the compiler says, okay, I know I need to load program.cs up into memory. Now, when I go to start processing, I'm gonna look for the main method because I know that that's where the first line of code that I'm gonna run is going to be. So the first line inside of main is always the first line of code that runs in any C-sharp program. In this case, we only have one line of code, so that's the only code that can run. So here's our actual statement then at this point. So notice the format here. Again, this is going to be created for you. The method main will always be created for you. It'll always be static void main. I won't go into any great detail there yet. And it'll also allow for arguments to be passed to it. Don't worry about any of that. Just know that that structure will be there. Then the curly braces designate which statements are part of that main method. So when the compiler says, okay, I need to, know, I need to fire off the main method, then it knows I got to go inside the curly braces and start from the very first line, the very first statement, run that code, and then the next statement, and on and on within main. And then we may have calls to other functions in here or other methods in here. We could just say uh, my method parentheses semicolon. So that would be actually a call then to another method that I would create outside of this called static void my method. And then inside of there, I could put my own blocks of code that I would want to have run over and over again anytime within the program, I call that method. So I'd have various statements in here that would do different stuff. But that's a little bit, you know, getting down the road there ahead of what we're gonna be actually doing for our first assignment. Our first assignment is just simply creating this project, you know, getting, I, I need to see that everybody can create a basic C-sharp project and the Microsoft or the Visual Studio writes out the statement that you need, the assignment, the only change here, just want to see that you can actually change text in the right place in your code. So you'll type in hello universe instead of the default hello world. I think I mentioned this in class, but I'll remind you again, if I look at the title up here, the tab that has the title of my file that's open, program.cs, now I see an asterisk there. The asterisk is indicating I've made a change to the code. So once I click save, you'll see that asterisk goes away. So now I know that that code has been changed. Then to run the code, I like the shortcut control F5, but you can also access it here from this debug menu. You'll see that we have start debugging or start without debugging. So at this point, we don't need to debug our code. We're not troubleshooting problems within our code. We just wanna see it run. So that's why I use that shortcut control F5 when we're running our code. So you can click here to do it, or you can just from your keyboard hold down the control key and then press function key five on the keyboard. So that should then compile the code into the intermediary language. And then my operating system has the CLR necessary to process that intermediary language. So it, it processed my code, my uh, intermediate code there, and then generated the final output in a console object or in a console window, hello universe. Once uh, the project's open and uh, you've got your console right line statement there for you. So again, I, I think you should start at least knowing those basic components there. So again, the console is the, the class. And then all classes have three different 
types of data inside of them. They have the properties for the class, they have the methods for the class, and then the events that the class supports. So in this case, console has a right line method. That means that we, uh, anything that we put in the parentheses and in quotes there, and it doesn't always have to be in quotes. If I had a, like a variable that I want to extract the value from that variable, I could just type the, the variable name in there without a uh, quote without the quotes around it. So we'll get into data types in a little bit, but this is what we call a string value. Anytime that you put quotes around text, that means that it should interpret it as just characters as opposed to some sort of a mathematical operation or something like that. 